Hello and welcome to Suresh Agarwal's Mathematics Shortcuts. Today I'll be taking you through the five most important questions from the transportation part of the chapter life processes. So these five questions are very very important and you can expect one out of these to appear in your final board exam question paper. So let's get started with the first question. Distinguish between arteries and veins. What are the points of differences between arteries and veins? So these are the differences the broad list of differences that you can think of. The first one being the arteries, they carry blood away from the heart to various organs of the body, whereas the veins, they bring black, back blood from the various organs to the heart. Please do not write that arteries carry oxygenated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood because you know now that certain exceptions are there to this. The second point will be that arteries, they have thick elastic walls. Why? because the blood pressure is more. In case of arteries, the blood pressure is more, so the walls are thick and elastic. Whereas in case of veins, the blood pressure is comparatively less, much less I should say, so they have thin walls. So these two points, the second point and the fourth point, they are interrelated. Then the next point is they do not have walls. Arteries, they do not have walls, whereas the veins, they have walls to ensure that blood flows only in one direction. So if you are asked to write the structural differences, then what differences will you write? Structural means the difference in the structure. So I'll be writing S for a structural difference. So first and second, these two points can be mentioned as structural differences. If you get a question specifically that what are the structural differences, then you'll be writing these two points. But if you get a general question, what are the differences, then you can write any of these points. Again, two marks question, two points should be sufficient and three marks questions uh, three points should be sufficient. So this is the first question. The ne next question is give reasons. Ventricles have thicker muscular walls than atria. Because the ventricles when they contract the blood has to be pushed to the far off places to each and every corner of your body. Whereas the atria they just have to push the blood to the ventricles. So a forceful contraction is required to generate a blood pressure, a higher blood pressure to create a stronger pressure so that the blood can travel to every corner of the body. So this is the reason why the ventricles have thicker muscular walls than atria. And you can also add to this that the atria, they just have to push the blood up to the ventricles. So that is why a very forceful contraction is not required over there. So this was the answer to the first part, that is the A part. Walls are present in the heart, very, very simple, to prevent the backflow of blood so that the blood doesn't flow in the reverse direction, to prevent the backflow of blood. So that the blood doesn't flow in the reverse direction. Third part, veins are thin walled as compared to arteries. This I discussed just now in the previous question also because the blood pressure is more in the arteries and it's less in the veins. Blood pressure is less in veins. So that is why they are thin walled because there's no fear of bursting because if the pressure is more, then there's a tendency that the vessel may burst. So in case of arteries, they are thick walled. So to bear with the high blood pressure, but in case of veins, the walls are thin and the pressure is also less. So these two points are mutually related, right? Moving towards question number three, explain how water and minerals are transported in plants. A very, very important question yet again. So just have a look at the figure you are supposed to draw with this tag, uh, with this question. You can expect this as a three marks question. You are supposed to draw this figure there. So in this first, you will be writing, you will be explaining the answer in two parts. In the first part, you will be explaining about the active absorption of water and minerals from the soil. Active absorption means that energy is spent for this purpose. Active absorption of water and minerals from the soil by the xylem vessels. By xylem. 
and in the second part you will explain the transpiration pull so the loss of water from the leaves through transpiration creates a suction force which pulls the water up from the roots to the tallest of trees to the highest points of the tallest trees so this is how this question has to be answered a diagram to be drawn and these two points to be explained in detail if you get it as a three marks question fourth question is why is it necessary to separate oxygenated and deoxygenated blood blood in mammals and birds so mammals and birds they are warm blooded warm blooded means that they have to maintain their body temperature and since they are warm blooded they have high energy requirements so they need a large amount of energy in order to maintain their body temperature and that is the reason that they cannot tolerate the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood because if the blood gets mixed the amount of oxygen carried to the body would be less and the amount of energy released uh, release would also be less so they will not be able to survive in such a situation so basically you need to explain that birds and mammals they are warm blooded so they have high energy requirement in order to maintain their body temperature and that is the reason they cannot bear the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood as in such a situation the amount of oxygen carried would be less and the organism will not be able to fulfill its energy requirement and hence it would become difficult for the organism to survive moving towards question number 5 draw a sectional view of the human heart and why is the flow of blood through the human heart called double circulation now as far as the sectional view of human heart is concerned i'll be sharing the link over here you can see the link flashing on your screen just click on that link and you get the access to the diagram which you are supposed to draw and also for the second part why is the flow of blood through human heart called double circulation for this i'll just quickly tell you a flow chart which is again very very important so suppose this box represents your heart while labeling always remember that your right hand will be the left side of your heart so this is going to be the left atrium the left ventricle and the right atrium and the right ventricle so we have the lungs here and let this be the body so how does the blood circulate i'll be using two different colors to show you the circulation we'll be using blue for deoxygenated blood so from the bo uh, body the blood goes up to the right atrium through the vena cava so vena cava are carrying the deoxygenated blood from the body to the right atrium from here it goes to the right ventricle and from the right ventricle it goes to the lungs through the pulmonary what artery or vein yes it's going to be the artery because it is carrying the blood away from the heart then i'll be using green for oxygenated blood then from the lungs the blood gets oxygenated and comes back to the left atrium this time through the pulmonary vein because it is bringing the blood to the heart from the atrium it goes to the ventricle and from the ventricle it again goes to the body for distribution through the aorta now you can see that there are two loops that have been made the upper loop is known as the pulmonary circulation the part which deals with the lungs this is the pulmonary circulation part and the part which forms the loop with the body is known as the systemic circulation part so since two uh, loops have been formed we call it as double circulation because in one complete cycle blood flows twice through the heart so that is why this is known as double circulation the flow chart for double circulation is on your screen a very important flow chart and for the sectional view of the human heart there's a screen a link on your screen click on that link and you get access to the diagram thanks for joining me and if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button comment on it and share it with your friends also if you have not subscribed to our channel yet do subscribe to the channel for many many more such informative videos both on math as well as science and thanks for joining me